should never be called retarded. Do those things we never had. I don't let my disability ruin my life. It's Dolly! Everyone deserves a second chance. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Crispy King Show. My name is Kate, and today I'm in Susan's William Kitchen with Andy Davenport. That's right, this is Cakes and Conversations. We've got an incredible show in store for you today. Grab all your supplies and we'll see you in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Kate, almost 30. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but I moved up here to Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, this is my... <laughs> Today, I get to introduce my good friend, Kate Hemby. Kate and I have been friends for over 15 years, and she is an incredible person, a great friend. Kate, tell them where we are today. Nashville, Tennessee, the capital of Tennessee. Hi, everybody who's watching. Kate, tell me three words that describe you. Happy, kind, and sweet. We're bored, bored, bored. <laughs> the sweetest chef does that. He does. How's he talk? He's got that. Shady Manny Manny shit. The, the burky turkey. <laughs> hey, Kate, tell them what we're going to create today. Well, today we are going to create two things. We're going to make a K necklace and an Able logo because I happen to work at Able. Yeah, tell me a little bit about Able. Able is a non profit store to help women in poverty, and we have a place where we have our own jewelry studio. So we make our jewelry and hand. We sell lots of things. Yeah, and what's your favorite thing that you sell? I'm going to say the letter charm necklace and the purses. The purses. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Today, we go on next level with the butter, Kate. Yeah. Next level. You ain't got to cut it. Well, you and I unwrap hey that and put it in. <laughs> We're going to put in four tablespoons of butter like we usually do. We're going to do a full batch which I guarantee you will leave us with a ton of extra Rice Krispies. But the way that Kate has been sneaking marshmallows as we've been setting up, I have a feeling she's going to want to go home with some extra. Is yeah. that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's melt it down. Who is one of your heroes? Jesus. Why is Jesus your hero? Because he made me awesome. Yeah. Who's another hero? My parents, because they did a wonderful job of raising me. So we are melting, we have melted our butter, as you see. Yeah, we have, and what's next? Marshmallows! Yeah, that's right, let's put in the marshmallows. 16 ounces of marshmallows. Fluffiness going your way, it smells like popcorn. <laughs> just a little bit, is it like popcorn or is it just the butter that the makes it? The butter that makes it like popcorn. All right, so what we like to do is stir all of these up. You can use a spatula if you want. I just use my hands when I do it. And I get them in there and make sure every one of them's covered in butter. You gonna time yourself or something? No. <gasps> okay, that is a little hot. Maybe the spatula. <laughs> maybe the spatula. Kato will say you're the first person to burn their hands on the butter. But maybe, we used a different microwave. Maybe it took it up a notch today. Yes. Tennessee microwaves, do they cook hotter than Georgia microwaves? I don't know, sometimes, yeah, because sometimes when I eat a meal at work, it takes a long time for it to cool down. Oh, it does. You usually cook your meals at work in a microwave? Yes, or I like to bring homemade lunches, like sandwiches and stuff. Yeah. It's whatever I'm in the mood for. What do you think it was like to be a parent raising a child with a disability? It was hard, but they never gave up. They taught me how to educate myself. They taught me the accommodations for classes and taught me how to live on my own. I have two brothers. I have one who lives in Nashville. He's working at Plate Beat, but he wants to apply for either to be a physical therapist or a lawyer. And I have another brother who's in Chattanooga, and he's an ABA therapist. Tell me a little bit more about Abel. Abel is a sweet company. If, oh, I don't know when it ends, you might want to look, but if you want to sell, use the code MOTHER25 if you're looking for a sell for anything for a Mother's Day. We have great Mother's Day options. That is definitely an unpaid sponsor, but we're going to be giving Abel a shout out all day long. Love you, Barrett Ward, if you're watching this. <laughs> what makes Abel so special? The people, all my friends I made, including Barrett. Tell me more about him. He's such a nice guy. I think he knows I have special needs and he's good friends with her. And he happens to be Jenny Scott's neighbor. And what makes him a good boss? Oh, he's just so calm. He has a good heart. 
Is it more important for you to be at a place where you can work hard or where you are accepted and loved? Both. If you like this, make sure to like us all on the, our video and to hit that notification bell to never miss an episode. That's right. And if you'll hit the subscribe button too, uh, that will help send you also those notifications. And when you hit subscribe and you share this with other people and you like it and do all the things that Kate said, it supports what we're doing at Krispy King and Cakes and Conversations. You can squeeze and as you squeeze, you just want drops. So you just squeeze gently. There we go. Now that's going to make it like a light yellow. Do you want to like a really light yellow? Yeah. That's probably enough then. So the bowl will be a little warm on the edge, but it's not as hot as the butter was, obviously. As you can see, it looks like we got fire. I love the color. It does look a little bit like fire. That's a great way to describe that. Don't worry, people. The kitchen is not on fire. Working nine to five. Da 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 go. Bobby Parton. Do you like Dolly Parton? Mm -hmm. she, she lives here in Nashville, right? Yeah, I knew a girl from Abel who, who left for some reason, but used to work for Dolly Parton. Oh, yeah. You ever met Dolly? No, but I would love to. But I've been to Dollywood. I think that's good. Dollywood is the best thing park here in Tennessee. If you saw Dolly Parton walking down the street, or if she walked into Abel, what would you do? I would scream, Jolene, it's Dolly! <laughs> When did you know you were created a little different? Probably until I was in the eighth or ninth grade and growing up till now. How did you know? My mom told me, I asked my mom, what's wrong with me? What'd she say? She said, honey, we don't know. We don't, we might have autism or not. I, I never got tested for autism. Would you want to have a diagnosis? Yes. Why? So they can tell if I have autism or not. So I can tell other people. Why do you need to tell other people? So they cannot treat me different. You think it would help? Yes. You graduated from college, right? Yes. I um, let go ideal program. It's a two. Well, if you want to do third year, it's a two year program for Adults with intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. a Lipscomb has taught me so many things. How to live on your own, how to put in your expenses for the month, job interviews. We've been having, a, we took classes and we've been even have in and off internships. What do you mean internships? It's not a paid, it's where you like work at on or off campus and like you do like work like mailing or when I did off I used to help at the National Food Project and the Animal Rescue Place. Uh -huh. When you were at Ideal did you live on campus? For one year. Okay and then where? I lived with another girl and another girl. Okay so you had some cool roommates? Well we had to let one roommate go. Okay that happens. Yes. Do you want to live on your own one day? Yes, but I would love to have a roommate. What would be hard for you if you lived on your own? I want to learn how to cook and clean better. And pay my bills and decide why I should rent or buy a house. And then you graduated and what happened after that? I did the third year and I got an, awful, an awesome job at Able. Yeah, it's, it's not awful. We know what's awesome. I'm sorry. It's an awesome job and I've been there for almost three years. So. And tell me more of what you do there. I package jewelry. Uh-huh. And I sign cards. So. What do you mean you package jewelry? So they make the jewelry there. And yes, and you put it on the card and then you put it in a plastic bag. And so you get it once they make it, you put it onto the card uh -huh. and into the bag. Uh -huh. And then do you have to inspect it also? Because We expect it before we package it. If you could have any job at Able, what job would you want to have? I don't, I don't know. I think I'm happy where I am. You are? Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool having a job you love. Yes. What makes you great at your job? Just keep doing what I was trained to do. Keep doing my best and never give up. What's the mission of ABLE? To help women in poverty and to help people in jobs. And the ABLE hires people who need second chances. Like there's been girls from the HOPE program that have had 
drug or alcohol addictions. And you work with them? Yes. What kind of things do you learn working with them? I learn about their stories and how some of them had to lose their kids. How does that make you feel? Sad, but everyone deserves a second chance. You ready to give it a test run? Yes. All right. You can eat it like a lollipop if you want. Oh, and you did. Oh, gosh. Okay. It's everywhere. <laughs> All right, we got butter on our hands, our fingertips. So what we want to do first, I've never done a necklace, but we're going to flatten it out a little bit. Flat, flat, flat. Flat, flat, flat. Kate, what's your favorite song? I like Africa by Toto. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. Away from you. Another <laughs> hundred, hundred men or more could, could ever do. Except for make Rice Krispies. I hate. I bless the rains down in Africa. It's gonna take some time to do the things we never had. You like music, don't you? Yeah, I grew up playing with Thomas Rhett. Uh, get out. No, it's true. His wife came to Abel and she, and she used to have a book and some bags of ours. And then I got to meet Mika Kelly from Friday Night Lights in Parenthood. Oh, I love Friday Night Lights. Yes. Was she nice? Oh, she's a, uh, she was so sweet. I almost, I, was, I asked her a lot of my questions. I got a question with her, so I got to talk to her. Good. What, what kind of things y'all like to talk about? Family locations and where she is now. Yeah. And I'll, I'm like her shows and stuff, and she's in Canada. What's the furthest you've ever traveled? Europe! Oh, where'd you go? Paris, France, London, England, Krakow, Poland. Wait, did I ever say Berlin, Germany? No. And Berlin, Germany. Yeah. The main reason I wanted to go to Krakow was to see Auschwitz. Poland was to see Auschwitz. Oh, you did? It's depressing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to process. Why'd you want to go there? i just been reading about it and I, I heard it's a big him like, I just want to see it in person. Yeah. So they didn't treat him well there? No. Okay. Hit, let me tell you this, Hitler hated people with disabilities. He thought we, he thought we should die. And how'd that make you feel? Mad and sad. Yeah. How did, how did he treat them? Like, don't, like they're his pigs. Really? He treated them like they were retarded. Mm. He thought we were the R word. Yeah. How have other people treated you that way in your life? There have been some, but no. People at my work treat me like I'm I'm a part of their team, like I don't have a disability. Yeah, they do? Yes, they treat me with lots of respect. How's that make you feel? Happy. Yeah. How should people, so if, well, tell me this. So you have a disability. Yes. What, do you have a diagnosis? They don't know I have autism, but I have slow motor skills. And what does that mean? I have a hard time with my hands and it takes time for me to package and write stuff. I do not like my disability ruin what I do or how it affects me. You don't like what? I don't let my disability ruin my life. Yeah, you don't, do you? No. Do you work on just still doing it or you just kind of gotten okay with it? I'm okay that I have a disability. I think God made me this special for a reason. He did. Would you rather people use the word Disability or special needs? Disability. I mean, they're both equal, so it's hard to tell. Choose. Should people who have a disability be embarrassed to talk about it? Never. Hey, I think we're supposed to make this necklace. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Down here. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, we're gonna go left-handed. All right. I tend to stick with the same hand when I'm cutting with a knife, but. All right, can I help you with this? Yes. Okay, let's do it together. I want you to press right here. They, the almost, look like the, they almost look like a shape of pizza. It does. Let's put some more butter everybody on Everybody understands my disability. Everybody's just so nice. I'm gonna be my friend at Able that sometimes outside of work, I get to hang out and do fun stuff with them. With your coworkers? Yes. Like they invite you to go do things? Yeah, like dinner or a movie night and girls' yeah. night. Oh, girls' nights. What kind of things y'all do on girls' night? We sometimes go out to dinner and watch movies. Yeah. Do you ever go dancing with the girls? No way, Jose. <laughs> Kate, do you ever go on a date? Oh dear, this. 
I do. Yes, I told him, but he never gave me an answer if he wanted to go on a date with me. So you asked him out? Yes. And he just didn't respond? No. What do you look for in a guy? Someone that won't stand me up because that happened and someone that wants to have fun and won't touch me inappropriately. And it wasn't want to have sex until we're married. And he's a good Christian. Do you want to get married one day? If it's the right person, I do. What do you think that would be like? Like a fairy tale come true. And we're back! So we are gonna add marshmallows in and melt with the butter. Do you drive? No. Do you want to learn to drive? Is that something you'll be able to do someday? No, I tried it before and I did not like it. Yeah? How come? Tell me about it. I'll give it another try, but I think I went on, I turned too fast when I put the pedal too hard. Yeah? Start going too fast or you braked real hard? I don't know, but I think driving just makes me nervous because of deers and big trucks. Yeah. Well, how do you get around? I have my dad and my mom take me to work. Okay. What other ways do you get around? I have friends pick me up and people, but in Lipscomb I learned how to take the bus. So. What? How do you learn best? By following directions and people riding down steps. So do you do good reading or with pictures or when someone shows you and then you do it? What's best for you? Like reading and showing me pictures. Yeah. You do like when you get challenged to do more? Yes. Yeah. I like to have a job where people respect and understand my disability. Yeah. Do you think that that's how everybody with a disability feels? Yes. So, a lot of people who watch, and if you're watching at home, you, you would be in agreement with this, that sometimes maybe you don't know how to talk to someone about their disability or maybe to really understand what their disability is like. And so what a lot of people do, and if this is you, know that you're really typical, but a lot of people, instead of asking, they just avoid it. Uh, they really stay silent. Maybe you stay silent because you're uncomfortable, um, but would you rather somebody just talk to you about your disability and get to know you? Yeah, so. Yeah, so what's, how could somebody come talk to you? What's a question maybe they could ask if they wanted to get to know you, but maybe they had questions about your disability? Wait, like, Kate, what do you like to do and what triggers you? Yeah, oh, so what do you like to do? That talks about the things you're good at, right? Mm -hmm. But what triggers you? Tell me about triggers. Triggers is something that you get scared of. Something that triggers my disabilities, i.e. sometimes don't like lying noises. Like I am, I don't like like the sounds of fire drills or the, or the smoke detector going off. Yeah, because it's scary? Yes. Everybody has triggers. That is one of the things I've learned through the years of working with my friends with disabilities is they are real confident and comfortable speaking about their triggers. Um, and the difference is I just don't talk about mine. But I've got a lot of triggers, things that get me upset, make me uncomfortable, make me react a certain way. And I would bet that you as well have triggers like that. And really consider that, that as you enter into conversations and relationships with our friends with disabilities, just because they talk about their triggers or they're uh, open to even expressing how they feel about it, that's not a bad thing. That's actually probably healthy. Uh, the fact that they're gonna let you know and let you in on that. And even consider what are some of yours because as you begin to discover your triggers, you might realize you're more alike than different. Um, oh, and speaking of special needs, one no-no word is, we, uh, me and some other ideal students did this. We showed the whole chapel, spread the word to end the word, not using the R word. Yeah, so can we talk about that a second? Yes. Has anybody ever called you the R word? No, not that I know of. Okay, so explain a little bit about spread the word to end the R word and why that's, a, why that's important. Special needs should never be called retarded because if they, they think it, retarded means they're stupid and not smart. That's right. And how do you think that, why do you think people use that word? Because they probably never had training with special needs kids. Yeah. So a lot of people won't get training. Do you know that this, what we're doing right now, it might be the training that they're getting. Uh, what we're learning is a lot of people who watch the show, 
Um, this is their first experience with learning about disabilities. So keep tell, tell them if maybe they've used the R word before. Um, what, what are some other things they could say or what are some options? Because you said um, spread the word to end the R word. Maybe um, a little bit, maybe they're delayed or have, cha are they not, cha are they have a little bit of a challenge issue? Yeah, delayed or a little challenge. Yes. Great words. You don't need to take a class to learn how to speak about disabilities or with someone with a disability. You just need to build a friendship with someone who might be delayed or have some challenges because you will learn exactly how to talk exactly how to engage and the reality is you're gonna I think what they're gonna realize is people like Kate pretty awesome and people with disabilities <laughs> we are like normal people so treat us like normal people that's right I would say you might be better than normal you want to keep going yeah. all right in eighth grade, I think um, I was bullied. Probably nobody understood I had special needs. I like to party. Kate wanted to ask me some questions. <laughs> that we are just like normal people, even though we're created different. Till next time, America.